About thousand years ago, a masterpiece in optics was written in Cairo, which is in Egypt. This particular masterpiece was written by a person called as Ibn Al Haytham in and around thousand CE. It is considered as one of the most influential scientific work from the medieval period, and it had two major implications. The first was it addressed certain questions related to optics including vision second thing and more important aspect is that it introduced prototypical scientific method to present thoughts which was kind of a revolution which was realized only later on after he published the work so who was ibn al haytham let's look at it He was born in 965 CE in Basra which is in Iraq. He held a position of a uh, vizier in Basra which is essentially a kind of a, a ministerial position and he was deeply kind of educated in various interesting aspects of theology, science and mathematics but eventually he lost interest in theology and gravitated more towards science and uh, mathematics. He was also employed to see whether they could regulate floods in the Nile River. Unfortunately, that did not happen and this resulted in a major problem for uh, Al Haytham. He was forced to actually go out of the place where he was living and settle in Cairo under a kind of a house arrest by the way. And uh, this essentially made him confined to a particular place in Cairo. which also gave him a lot of time to think about science and mathematics and interestingly this culminated into a wonderful book which we now call as the book of optics in english uh, which was written roughly around uh, 1020 ce and uh, he lived in cairo uh, ever since he moved into that particular place and eventually died in uh, 1040 ce and uh, we are going to discuss more about uh, that particular book the book itself was called as kitab al manzir and uh, it was written from 1011 to 1021 in seven volumes wonderful this explained how vision occurs and it also told that uh, the kind of perception of light which we have is essentially due to the light reflecting from an object into the eyes and uh, it also argued uh, that vision occurs in the brain uh, influenced by the personal experience uh, this was a deviation from uh, a prevailing theory during that particular time which was also called as the emission theory because in the emission theory the hypothesis was that the light had to go from the eye onto the object and that is how the vision was created not the other way around this particular work actually showed that uh, the light has to come from outside into the eye and then there's a perception of of that particular uh, object in uh, in the form of vision this book uh, turned out to be extremely influential so much so that it got translated into latin uh, in the 12th and the 13th century which was the subsequent centuries after which uh, Uh, Al Haytham wrote these books and uh, it enjoyed great reputation it is considered uh, as one of the greatest works even then uh, in the um, medieval periods this particular work was considered as an important piece of uh, disposition on uh, physics physical optics and in a in an interesting way also related to scientific method this was also printed later in uh, 1572 or so which was again distributed across uh, europe and it became a very important and standard text related to optics so uh, what was the theory of optics which al haytham proposed uh, let's let's try to understand the most important aspect is that it combined mathematical ray arguments which were kind of hypothesized by euclid it also brought some uh, very interesting philosophical arguments which were proposed by aristotle and also in order to explain the theory of vision uh, it also brought some understanding from the medical sciences 
so in a way it was not just a mere physics book but also kind of an interdisciplinary book which brought in viewpoints from medical science uh, philosophy and also geometry so in that sense it included various different disciplines uh, to explain optical phenomena it asserted uh, how uh, i perceives light and this is an important assertion because as i mentioned the understanding at that particular time was not deep people did not have a clear understanding of how vision occurs and this turned out to be an important uh, uh, kind of uh, hypothesis to propose and also verify he also argued that refracted rays um, would be perceived uh, in into the eye and this is an again and again a very important uh, hypothesis because uh, the concept of refraction was not very well appreciated during that time and uh, one of the most important aspect of uh, the theoretical and the uh, experimental exposition of uh, al haytham's work is that he also showed how to do experiments uh, and this was a very important aspect uh, because he not only gave the theory but also went on to verify that theory using experiments and we are talking about uh, you know uh, <laughs> 10th century uh, and that is actually very very uh, fascinating to to realize he also carried various experiments with uh, optical elements such as lenses mirrors and uh, proposed the ideas of reflection refraction and may- many other uh, related concepts so what were the key contributions into optics uh, because of this particular book first and the most important thing is it clearly explained the theory of vision uh, this was an important uh, prospect for people then because one did not know how really vision occurs how do we really see that was a fascinating question people were always intrigued by and uh, this work really played a very critical role in laying the foundation in understanding this concept it was also one of the first places where you will see the law of reflection being uh, mentioned and also verified so that is a very important uh, landmark in the history of uh, science uh, because one of the important laws in optics was kind of uh, postulated and also verified it also it described camera obscura the so called pinhole camera what we generally know one of the earliest kind of evidences of camera obscura is this particular book of course there was already an understanding during that time that you can form images but the analysis and the device implementation was very fine tuned in this particular book and there is a nice explanation of how images form because uh, al haytham was proposing rectilinear propagation of light which means that light travels in straight lines and that was one of the first times where both using theory and experiments this particular proposition was made he also proposed a very interesting apparatus to uh, measure uh, refraction of light in a way it was one of the earliest and the crudest form of refractometer and uh, it turned out to be a, a very fascinating because the design is still very relevant and useful in in conventional optics laboratories in a way the questions what uh, al haytham was asking is also closely related to the perception of color and light and uh, he also argues that in order to form image uh, and perceive light in human brain uh, there has to be interaction of light with the human uh, anatomy and this is one of the important uh, hypotheses he proposed and also kind of verified some hypothesis through laboratory experiments and there's a very beautiful diagram of the ice uh, which you can see uh, which is present on the screen and uh, that particular uh, diagram is uh, is one of the remarkable pictures uh, of science because it is now trying to explain vision from a scientific geometrical optics viewpoint so let's look at the structure of the book when i tell structure of the book this actually means that it had various different volumes so much so that it was written in seven volumes and let me just go through uh, 
volume by volume what is the basic content of that particular book the book 1 uh, deals with theories of light color and vision so it again is kind of giving a foundation for these important topics the book 2 presented uh, al haytham's theory of visual perception so based on the book 1 he tries to explain a lot of interesting aspects of uh, how uh, visual perception is achieved and uh, the book 3 and 4 are uh, are on the errors in visual perception and uh, in the book 4 uh, there's also a kind of discussion on uh, errors related to reflection and other particular principles and the uh, book 4 and 5 uh, provide experimental evidence on the theory of reflection what was hypothesized so you can see in the first few books he is laying the foundations of the theory and in the book 4 uh, and 5 he is trying to verify the hypothesis which he had proposed via experimentation and this is quite remarkable for that particular time so the uh, book 6 uh, also talks about errors related to the reflection and what are the kind of uh, errors one can actually look into so he is also paying attention to the possible errors in thinking and the book 7 deals with the concept of refraction and uh, related issues and uh, so therefore these seven books really form an outstanding preposition and hence a masterpiece in optics and very importantly it uses the scientific method so in scientific method what one generally does is one makes an observation about the world around uh, you and uh, one can ask the question uh, uh, something related to the observation what you are making so you gather background information related to that question you formulate a hypothesis uh, and you you propose a, an explanation of your observation and uh, one can design an experiment uh, to test that particular hypothesis and uh, one goes on to analyze that data which is collected using the experiments and you can uh, kind of compare and contrast and draw conclusions about the hypothesis from the experimental results what you have obtained and eventually you communicate those findings to a broader audience and uh, uh, into you, to into the peer community and uh, obtain feedback and if the feedback is uh, kind of uh, negative in some sense you take that feedback and you correct your hypothesis or your experiments and you kind of fine tune the question and this is exactly what uh, uh, al haytham did he used this iterative iterative process of uh, proposing an idea verifying that idea using experiments and uh, putting it out taking feedback and uh, you know iteratively making it better and better and we are talking about 1020 ce so it's quite remarkable that he is doing all these things uh, at that that period of time because there was no well laid hypothesis or a scientific method then but he actually devised this uh, very thoughtful process to to take his work forward and uh, make it better and better so what was the influence of this book what is the leg- legacy of the book it had a major influence on the development of not only optics and not only physics and not only mathematics but also the whole scientific process itself and this had a major impact as i mentioned in europe between 13 to 17th century because all the great people including leonardo da vinci newton etc etc galileo all of them were aware of uh, al haytham's uh, book and uh, they all some way or the other derived some inspiration from that particular uh, work this book essentially laid the foundations for modern optical phenomena and also introduced a very scientific way of doing optics experiments which has turned out to be extremely useful even to date so al haytham uh, deservingly is also called uh, as father of modern optics in some quarters and uh, also at, at sometimes he is called as a pioneer of the modern scientific method which i think is is a deserved kind of praise but one should be a little cautious because this kind of thoughtful processes might have also occurred to people before him but the most important aspect is that most of the stuff what al haytham did he registered uh, it in the book and that book is still remaining and there is evidence of lot of work what he did and that documental evidence is what really is bringing so much of praise to al haytham's uh, thoughts and processes and that is another reason why documentation is so important and that plays a such a critical role in uh, understanding the history and the history of science 
So the book uh, which he wrote, uh, the book of optics, is also uh, considered uh, as uh, a great masterpiece. It is also ranked alongside Newton's Principia as one of the most influential book in the history of physics, and uh, in my opinion, also history of science. Uh, it is quite a remarkable thing. Uh, so he also worked on various different topics as i mentioned he was not just only interested in optics he also was deeply interested in uh, philosophy mathematics and uh, metrology and various different uh, areas of uh, uh, human thought process during that time and he contributed he wrote a lot of books upwards of uh, 60 to 70 books maybe half of them actually are still preserved in one, some of the libraries across um, middle east uh, there's also one particular book which is present i've heard that uh, which which has his own handwriting uh, still preserved and which is kind of a remarkable thing uh, and uh, something which which should, as human uh, endeavor we should preserve such kind of uh, treasures so these kind of uh, influences uh, are very important also to motivate people and this motivated uh, a lot of people not only in the uh, islamic world but also had percolation of ideas downstream into europe and also into other parts of asia and uh, al haytham is uh, undoubtedly one of the greatest uh, scientists so to speak uh, during the uh, during that particular period and one should really uh, acknowledge uh, his contributions uh, a, a lot unfortunately like uh, all many good things al haytham's work and al haytham's life came to an end he died in uh, 1040 ce approximately around uh, when he was 75 years and uh, his legacy still continues as you can see that we are still discussing about his work his book even after 1000 years since that book was written so it's kind of a tribute to to the science and uh, the thought processes of uh, ibn al haytham there are many excellent references uh, one of the main person from whom you can learn a lot about al haytham is uh, a professor ai sabra who is uh, uh, no more unfortunately but uh, he was a professor of uh, history of science and later uh, professor emeritus of history of science at uh, harvard university he is the one who really has taken al haytham's work and translated all the seven books and also added fantastic commentaries and all those books have been published and if somebody is interested please uh, have a look at, look at them i'll just uh, uh, have these references in the show notes uh, so that you can go and explore a little bit more further al haytham's work has been uh, kind of explored and a lot of scholars have been studying his work as i mentioned it laid the foundations for uh, for understanding the physical world from a scientific view point and uh, sabra's uh, uh, books uh, really open our eyes into the great work what uh, al haytham did so you will also find uh, some interesting uh, links and uh, references in the show notes so do explore and uh, do uh, like and subscribe to science meets history and pratidwani which is part of science meets history uh, youtube channel you can also listen to the podcast on uh, spotify apple and other platforms so i hope uh, you enjoyed uh, learning more about this masterpiece on optics until next time bye bye take care